Hello and welcome everyone. I am here to discuss on biodiversity and its conservation. This module is under the paper Environmental Health in the subject of Social Medicine and Community Health. This module has been developed by a team. And the team members are myself, Dr. Madhutandra Sarkar as content writer, Dr. V. M. Gupta as paper coordinator, and Dr. C. P. Mishra as principal investigator as well as content reviewer. This module has been developed with the intention that after completing this module, the students will be able to define biodiversity and describe the levels of biodiversity, explain the patterns of biodiversity, understand the importance of biodiversity, explain the uniqueness of Indian biodiversity, state the causes of biodiversity loss and describe the threats to biodiversity, and last but not the least, they should be able to explain various methods of conservation of biodiversity. The term biodiversity is the shortened form of two words, biological and diversity. Biological diversity was first used by Thomas Lafter in 1980. The term biodiversity was coined by Walter G. Rosen in 1985, but the term was popularized by the sociobiologist Edward Wilson. Biodiversity refers to all the variety of life on the earth, that is plants, animals, fungi and microorganisms as well as to the communities that they form and the habitats in which they live. Biodiversity is not only the sum of all ecosystems, species and genetic material, but also includes the variability within and among them. It is an attribute of life. For example, the variety of bird species, the genetic variability of wheat around the world, forest types, etc. Biodiversity forms the very foundation of human existence. It represents the wealth of biological resources available to us. It underpins the health of the planet and has a direct impact on all our lives. Greater species diversity ensures natural sustainability for all life forms. More sustainability means a healthy ecosystem and a healthy ecosystem can better withstand and recover from natural disasters. Scientists have discovered and named only 1.75 million species out of the total 10 to 13 million species estimated to exist on the earth. Biologists estimate that as many as 27,000 species are becoming extinct each year and thus three species become extinct every hour. It is important to recognize that the earth's declining biodiversity is a serious global problem. A large number of factors and forces are responsible for the steep decline in the Earth's biodiversity during the last century due to tremendous increase in human population and migration. This in turn can lead to the over-exploitation, habitat loss and fragmentation, land use change and pollution. Besides the profound ethical and aesthetic implications, it is clear that the biodiversity loss has serious economic and social costs. We should recognize the importance of conserving biodiversity. The Convention on Biological Diversity, that is CBD, is an important international initiative to promote biodiversity conservation. The fundamental requirement is the in-situ conservation of ecosystems and natural habitats and the maintenance and recovery of viable populations of species in their natural surroundings. We must conserve and sustainably use biological diversity for the benefit of present and future generations. 
What is biodiversity? How to define it? Biodiversity is the term given to the variety of life on the earth. It is the variety within and between all species of plants, animals and microorganisms and the ecosystem within which they live and interact. An important and widely used definition is that included within the CBD, Convention on Biological Diversity. It defines biodiversity as the variability among living organisms from all sources including interalia, terrestrial, marine and other aquatic ecosystems and the ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within species, between species and of ecosystems. What are the levels of biodiversity? First, genetic diversity. Genetic diversity refers to the variation of genes within the species. The differences could be in alleles, that is different variants of same genes, in entire genes, that is the traits determining particular characteristics or in chromosomal structures. The genetic diversity enables a population to adapt to its environment and to respond to natural selection. Next is species diversity. Species diversity refers to the variety of species within a region. Simplest measure of species diversity is species richness, that is the number of species per unit area. Another measure of diversity is species evenness, that is the number of individuals among the species. In nature, both the number and kind of species as well as the number of individuals per species vary leading to greater diversity. This picture shows global species diversity. It shows proportionate number of species of major taxa of plants, invertebrates and vertebrates. In invertebrates group, group you can see insects form the majority. Others are mollusks, crustaceans and other animal groups. In vertebrates, you can see that fishes form the majority. Others are amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. In plants, you can see that fungi and angiosperms form the majority. Others are algae, lichens, mosses, ferns and alleys. Next is community and ecosystem diversity. Ecosystem diversity is the diversity of habitats that is the place or site where an organism or a population of organisms naturally occurs which support different life forms. Diversity at the level of community and ecosystem exists along three perspectives that is alpha diversity, beta diversity or gamma diversity. Alpha diversity refers to the diversity of organisms sharing the same community or habitat. That is, it is, is within community diversity. The rate of replacement of species along a gradient of habitats or communities is called beta diversity. That is, between community diversity. Diversity of the habitats over the total landscape or geographical area is called gamma diversity. Gamma diversity includes both alpha and beta diversities and the relationship is gamma equals to alpha plus beta plus q where q is total number of habitats or communities, alpha is average value of alpha diversities and beta is average value of beta diversities. What do you mean by hotspots of biodiversity? Certain regions of the world are very rich in biodiversity. These areas are called as mega diversity zones. And India is one of the mega diversity countries. The criteria 
for determining a hotspot r the area should support more than 1500 endemic species that is species restricted restricted to a particular geographic region and secondly it must have lost over 70% of the original habitat normal mars developed the concept of hotspots in 1988 to designate priority areas for in situ conservation the hotspots are the richest and the most threatened reservoirs of plant and animal life on the earth among the 25 hotspots of the world two are found in india namely western ghats and the eastern himalayas these areas are exceptionally rich in flowering plants reptiles amphibians butterflies and some species of mammals this figure depicts the terrestrial biodiversity hotspots you can see that in india western ghats and eastern himalayan regions have been shown as biodiversity hotspots next patterns of biodiversity first pattern is latitudinal gradients this is the most well known pattern of biodiversity in general species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles with very few exceptions tropics in the latitudinal range of 23.5 degree north to 23.5 degree south harbor more species than temperate or polar areas the mechanism for this pattern is not known with certainty however a multitude of hypotheses seek to explain this german naturalist and geographer alexander von humboldt observed that within a region species richness increased with increasing explored area but only up to a limit the relation between species richness and area for a wide variety of taxa that is angiosperm plants birds bats fish water fishes turns out to be a rectangular hyperbola on a logarithmic scale however the relationship is a straight line described by the equation log s equals to log c plus z log a where s is species richness a is area z is slope of the line that is regression coefficient and c is y intercept this figure depicts species area relationship you can see that species richness has been plotted plotted against area and it shows hyperbolic relationship between area and species richness however in logarithmic scale this relationship is a straight line what is the importance of biodiversity biodiversity has several benefits and services like ecosystem services biological resources and social benefits ecosystem services they provide are protection of water resources soil protection nutrient storage and cycling pollution reduction climate stability and maintenance of certain ecological processes natural vegetation cover helps in protection of water resources and wetlands and forests they help in purification of water conservation of biodiversity also helps in conservation of soil and retention of nutrients and moisture in the soil biodiversity helps in recycling of nutrients in between atmosphere and as well as in the soil it also helps in reduction of pollution wetlands break down and absorb pollutants 
Biodiversity also helps in climate stability. Undisturbed forest helps in rainfall in the vicinity. And it also helps in maintenance of certain ecological processes. Biodiversity also helps in providing biological resources of economic importance like food, fiber, medicines, fuel, wood, ornamental plants, breeding material for crop improvement, future resources, etc. Certain plants gives us food and also certain plants are the sources of natural fiber like cotton and jute. Certain plants and animal species, they also help in the treatment of certain elements. Firewoods uh, is used as fuels and also wood is used as uh, building purposes and also making of furniture. It also helps uh, or provide us as breeding material for crop improvement like uh, genetic material uh, from the wild crop plant are used for production of new varieties of cultivated crops for improvement of the yield and resistance. It has been shown that conservation biodiversity is linked to provision of future resources. Biodiversity also provides certain social and economic benefits like the sanctuaries, botanical gardens, aquarium, natural parks, they have recreational and entertainment value. This biodiversity also has certain cultural values like Tulsi is planted and worshipped in India. It also provides livelihoods, particularly to the indigenous community. And the natural areas are used for research and education purposes. Coming to the uniqueness of Indian biodiversity, one should know about uniqueness of biodiversity existing in India. With only 2.4% of the land area, India accounts for 7 to 8% of the recorded species of the world. More than 45,000 species of plants and 81,000 species of animals are found in India. The Trans Himalayan region with its sparse vegetation has the richest wild sheep and goat community in the world. The snow leopard and black necked crane are found here. The great Indian bustard, which is highly endangered bird, is found in Gujarat region rich in extensive grasslands. Northeast India is one of the richest regions of biodiversity in the country. It is specially rich in orchids, bamboos, ferns, citrus, banana, mango and jute. India is also rich in coral reefs. Major reef formations in Indian seas occur in the Gulf of Manar, Gulf of Kutch, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep. Next, what are the causes of biodiversity loss? Biodiversity loss is a serious cause of concern for human survival. The Millennium Ecosystem Assessment identifies the following as the most important direct drivers leading to loss of biodiversity. These are habitat change, climate change, invasive alien species, over-exploitation of species, and pollution, especially nutrient loading. Now I want to discuss in little detail about individual causes of biodiversity loss. First cause is habitat change. Humans have had an effect on every habitat on earth, particularly due to the conversion of land for agriculture 
cultivated systems that is areas where at least 30% of the landscape is in crop lands shifting cultivation confined livestock production or fresh water aquaculture now cover one quarter of earth's terrestrial surface habitat loss also occurs in coastal and marine systems though these changes are less well documented destructive fishing and coastal development can lead to losses of coral reefs next is climate change observed recent changes in climates especially warmer regional temperatures have already had significant impacts on biodiversity and ecosystems including causing changes in species distributions population sizes the timing of reproduction or migration events and an increase in the frequency of pest and disease outbreaks by the end of the 21st century climate change and its impacts are likely to be the dominant direct driver of biodiversity loss and changes in ecosystem services globally next is invasive alien species the spread of invasive alien species and disease organisms has increased because of increased threat and travel including tourism while increasingly there are measures to control some of the pathways of invasive species for example through quarantine measures and new rules on the disposal of ballast water in shipping several pathways are not adequately regulated particularly with regard to introductions into fresh water systems next is over exploitation for marine systems the dominant direct driver of change globally has been over fishing demand for fish as food for people and as feed for aquaculture production is increasing resulting in increased risk of major long lasting collapses of regional marine fisheries about 50% of the world's commercial marine fisheries are fully exploited and 25% are over exploited last but not the least is pollution since 1950 human mediated increases in nitrogen phosphorus sulfur and other nutrient associated pollutants that is nutrient loading have emerged as one of the most important drivers of ecosystem change in terrestrial freshwater and coastal ecosystems this driver is projected to increase substantially in the future nutrient loading will become an increasingly severe problem particularly in developing countries and particularly in east and south asia coming to threats to biodiversity extinction of some species and evolution of new species is a natural process these processes occur at a roughly equal rate in nature however the rate of extinction has outstripped the rate of evolution of new species recently this indeed is a cause of concern threatened species are those that are facing threats to their survival and may be at risk of extinction this table shows threatened species in india you can see that 313 species of animals and 247 species of plants are designated as threatened species in india among the animals 89 species of mammals 75 species of birds 25 species of reptiles 63 species of amphibians 39 species of fishes two species of mollusk and 20 species of other invertebrates are designated as threatened species and in total 560 species are threatened species in india in this table cr is critically endangered species en is endangered species and vu is vulnerable species next is conservation of biodiversity 
Conservation of biodiversity is important to prevent the loss of genetic diversity of a species, save a species from becoming extinct, protect ecosystems damage and degradation. First, coming to biodiversity conservation strategies. Biodiversity conservation strategies can be grouped into in situ or on site conservation and ex situ or off site conservation. In situ conservation includes the protection of plants and animals within their natural habitats or in protected areas. An ex situ or off site conservation means ex situ off site or off site conservation of plants and animals outside their natural habitats. This figure shows different biodiversity conservation strategies. We can see that biodiversity conservation strategies has been divided into in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. In situ conservation is actually protected area network which consists of secret groves, secret lakes, biosphere reserves, and natural parks and wildlife sanctuaries. And biosphere reserves can be both terrestrial and marine biosphere reserves. Ex situ conservation includes sacred plants, home gardens, seed banks, field gene banks, cryopreservation, botanical gardens, arboreta, zoological gardens, and aquaria. In situ conservation includes protection of habitat, protection of habitat in the form of national parks and sanctuaries and biosphere reserve. And also in situ conservation includes species oriented projects like project tiger, project elephant, project crocodile and also secret forest and secret lakes. Ex situ conservation includes botanical gardens, zoos, etc., gene banks, cryopreservation or freeze preservation and conservation at molecular level that is DNA level. Another important measure is legal measures. Legal measures undertaken at the national level in India is the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and the Biological Diversity Act 2002. There are several international initiatives also like Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, that is CITES, and Convention on Biological Diversity, that is CBD. Others are International Union for Conservation of Nature, or IUCN, and World Wide Fund for Nature, that is WWF, Man and the Biosphere Program, that is MAB, and Lastly, Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011 to 2020 and the IG targets of living in harmony with nature. All these efforts regulate the trade in biodiversity and promote its conservation and sustainable use. Another important measure is public awareness, communication and education, which is very, very important measure. And lastly, biodiversity conservation and sustainable development. Both these are very closely connected and sustainable living does not deplete natural resources or biodiversity. It rather promotes its conservation. Now I want to mention certain important points regarding biodiversity conservation. First is biosphere reserve. What is biosphere reserves? These are representative parts of natural and cultural landscapes extending over large areas of terrestrial or coastal or marine ecosystems which are internationally recognized within UNESCO's Man and the Biosphere Program. The main functions of the biosphere reserves are conservation to ensure the conservation of landscapes, ecosystems, species and genetic resources. It also encourages traditional resource use. The next function is development to promote economic development which is culturally, socially and ecologically sustainable. And the third function is logistic 
to provide support for research, monitoring, education, and information exchange related to local, national, and global issues of conservation and development. Important points regarding sacred forest and sacred lakes are these are traditional strategies particularly practiced in India and these are the undisturbed areas so helps in conservation of biodiversity. Gene banks are useful for ex situ collection and preservation of genetic resources. Cryopreservation is useful for conserving vegetative propagated crops. Conservation at molecular level that is DNA level is helpful for conservation of germplasm. And particularly I want to mention that wildlife protection is very important because market demands for certain body parts of animals like bones of tiger, rhino horns or peacock feathers is uh, directing the persons, those who are interested for killing these wife lives. So their protection is very much important. So to summarize, biodiversity is the term given to the variety of life on the earth. It is often understood at three levels, that is genetics, species and ecosystem diversity. The hotspots are the richest and the most threatened reservoirs of plant and animal life on the earth. Biodiversity is variably distributed across the earth. It underpins ecosystem functioning and the provision of ecosystem services that are essential for human well-being. Despite its fundamental importance, Biodiversity continues to be lost and human well-being is threatened. The most important direct drivers leading to loss of biodiversity are habitat change, climate change, invasive alien species, over-exploitation of species and pollution, especially nutrient loading. Biodiversity and its conservation are now vital environmental issues of international concern. Biodiversity conservation strategies include in situ or on-site conservation, for example, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves, sacred forest, etc. and ex situ conservation, that is botanical gardens, zoological parks, gene banks, cryopreservation, etc. Apart from that, certain legal measures and international efforts regulate the trade in biodiversity and promote its conservation and sustainable use. Thanks for visiting EPG Patshala and listening to this module.